Um, <laughs> good morning and welcome to Infinite Conversations. It's Infinity once again, and today I'm bringing to you a very, very interesting guy. He comes from Concord, New Hampshire. He's good friends with the man, the myth, the legend T-Rex. He's a singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, has his own style and flair that he brings to the environment of the culture of music, and he goes by Jake Bartlin. How are you today? What's up? How's it going? It goes, it goes. What's been good over what's been good over your way? Oh man, dude. I right now I you know, I was looking at um before we hopped on here, I was looking at like the, the preview for the um like on the webcam and I was like, Oh man, my studio looks like a complete mess right now. It's like <laughs> but it is it's it's in summer mode. So uh in, during the summer I basically use it as mostly like a, a storage closet because I just like I'm playing shows all the time and then just trying to move all the equipment around and it's just yeah it's madness so I mean nine nine times out of ten my studio looks like absolute garbage too yeah, but that's just yeah, because yeah. I'm <laughs> but you know it's like yeah I, you work 50 hours a week like I do and you come home and you work on this and you're, you're making music mm-hmm. and like you don't even have time to eat half the time oh. so like I'm not even worried about the rest of it until like oh I've got somebody coming through never mind you know mm-hmm. <laughs> yes but, sir yeah it's, it's pretty much just been um you know uh i call them they're more like gigs they're not really shows it's it's like bar gigs but uh basically just been doing that all summer it's pretty yep. my my go-to i mean between that and then trying to get together with just different people to like sit down track some stuff at the very least you know not even getting to the mixing stage but um it's been, it's been a fun but busy summer so far yeah and that that's all that matters and we got to enjoy it while we can because oh, yeah. you know things are getting wild out here so you know who knows we might be we might be back inside for a while you know so knock on wood <laughs> knock, yeah knock on wood because god dog it's only been a year since we could finally actually go to shows again I, I, I will say uh during the the, the peak of, of lockdown was probably the most music work i've ever gotten done in my life when it came to like actually getting like things like produced and getting things done yeah because <laughs> so. because it forced people to stay inside yep, you know yep yeah and that's that's been a topic rampant throughout my series here is you know everyone's perspective on it's different some people are like yeah i really didn't do shit during the pandemic because eh, i was depressed you know like i mean i get it like i get it everyone operates differently you know everyone's creative flow works differently like some people may have a studio but they only want to work if they can work with someone else you know like and i get it you know like i get it so you know but yeah so I really am a fan of your style. It reminds me of a lot of the elements you could get guitar-wise from uh, Room for Squares, yeah, uh, heavier um, things, you know. Um, so it, it, it's funny you should mention that actually, because um, I'm assuming you're probably like listening to uh, that 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 quick album slash EP thing, Seventeenth Street. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that track, I actually sat down and um, originally it was that. So that that woo, sorry, um, that was the first like multi-song project I had ever produced. Yep. Uh, I take that back. Minus like this really shitty blues album that nobody wants to talk about that I did in high school. But um, that was like the first like just complete project that I try to produce. And it's funny listening back to those now. Cause like a lot of those songs, I'm like, Oh man, I'm like, why is the compressor? Why too much? Well, or like, I'll be listening to like other stuff. I'm like, why did I dump so much reverb on this? What was I doing? But, um, yeah, no, it, it definitely, I, I've definitely taken a lot of inspiration from like early John Mayer stuff, you know, yeah. kind of looking at like sounds and whatnot. Yeah. And I don't mean like your, your, your sounds definitely have ranged from that to, you know, even more indie stuff, you know, um, I don't know if you're a fan of like groups like Iron and Wine. Um, I've heard of them. They're I, good. I, I've, yeah, I've definitely that. Well, that's so that's what's crazy. It's like people ask me like all the time. They're like, oh, you know, what, what kind of music do you produce? Right. What, what do you know? What? And I'm like, oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, OK, you know, um, for example, you, you like, you know, there's there's my stuff, which is like kind of like got like this like mayor-esque indie sort of sound with like a little bit of blues thrown in. And then like I've also done like all of like T-Rex's stuff. I'm 100 percent like like 
not to like bring too much of uh, T Rex into it. I know him as Tyler. We went to high school yeah. together. Yeah. And um, you know, we've been making like his his first couple tracks were made in like a shitty bedroom studio that I had, as opposed to this different shitty bedroom studio that I have now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so like like all of his stuff, you know, whether it's something like Hesitant that's a little bit more like lo-fi inspired, or like some of the newer stuff that um, yeah. he's been doing with like uh, Kev and um, Triloquist, who's like the man when it comes to production stuff. I mean, it's uh, all of that stuff is like music that like I will listen to and like like that's my kind of music, right? Yeah. Um, you know, listen it or like like right now there's a, another project that I'm working on with someone where it's like a um more like a like a classic kind of punk album. Like yeah. that's also my kind of music. So like I'm also a huge fan of like jazz. I'm also a huge fan of like um what's it? Um there's just so much like 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 the the Chance the Rapper album, Acid Rap, was a huge influence on, like, how I listen to music and, like, the type of music I like. So, like, there's all these different things. And yeah, definitely. I want to produce it all, <laughs> but at the same time, it's so hard to, like, the, all the, the different angles are completely different. Because, like, producing, like, you know, a, like a hip-hop beat is completely different than producing, like, this, like, more hardcore sound that, like, T-Rex has been going for, which is completely different than, like, what I normally do for myself. And yeah. it's just like, there's so much, but I want to do it all. But like, I only have so much time in my life and it's, it's, it's very stressful. <laughs> that is, that is the, the, the unspoken is there are not hours, not enough hours in a day to like actually yeah. get what we want to get done, done. Absolutely. You know? Trust, trust. I've, I've been a drummer my entire life. I've played in a plethora of bands, like of different styles, genres, you know, like, and and, you know, like, I, I was always so busy, like, you know, doing what I was booked for and what I was committed to that I never got to experiment with anything else, you mm-hmm. know. And and it eventually, like, in my, you know, I, 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 I put that to bed, and now it's a casual thing because, one, I hated playing shows because I'm the only guy who ever carries my shit in, sets it up, and then carries it out. <laughs> Everyone else is too busy, like, Especially as the and, drummer, that's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're like you're literally what I call like the the permanent resident roadie, you know, yep, like because yep. you you don't even carry in your stuff, you carry in everybody else's stuff. Oh, so like, <laughs> oh yeah, well that's like uh for um like my my primary whoops sorry uh I keep bumping this microphone um my primary source of income is like like I do solo acoustic gigs right. Yep. <laughs> Excuse me. Um. And so I learned very quickly doing that. I've been doing that actually now for about a year. And I learned probably within the first couple of weeks of the smaller your setup, the better. Yeah. And now I, I used design. to have a, yep. I used to have a huge pedal board. I've stripped everything down to one magic pedal that does a whole bunch of different things that I don't use 90% of the functions. I've got one mic stand. I've got one PA system that all packs up and then goes on wheels. Like it's, I can take yeah. everything from one trip to the car. If I need to. Yeah. Which is the ultimate. The ultimate coffee shop gigger's dream. You know? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And dude, and dude, I miss I miss playing shows like that. Cause you know, there's there was a, a store a long time ago. It is no longer alive. I'm not sure if you guys had them, but they were everywhere. It's called Hastings Entertainment. And uh, basically like they were like they records books memorabilia all kinds of shit and like they always had a built-in like coffee shop into them and the one back where i'm from in south texas um they would pay my band to go play acoustic shows and so we would just load up and like you said like i mean as a drummer like i was very very minimal you know it was a snare kick hats ride some brushes (laughs) maybe a crash and like call it good you know i'm like uh but th- those were the easiest setups and teardowns yep. of my life because it was literally like pull up, boom, 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 done. You know? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I um I don't know. I I that's something I wish I could see more of just in music as a whole. Like like maybe not so much these days, but I know for a while it was 
I don't even know whether to call it like the hardcore or punk or whatever, the loud, distorted electric guitar scene, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, those, those, it's not necessarily the whole scene, and especially not anymore. They've gotten a lot better about it. But like for a while, it was like, oh, like they got very uppity about genres. But mm-hmm. It's like, that's not techno grind, that's grind techno. And it's like, okay, listen. Dude. It was like this weird unspoken PC right. culture of music. Right. Where it's like, don't you, don't you miss genre me? Like, <laughs> and it's like, it's like, dude, listen, like it's just sound. Like, calm down, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then, and then it was like 2015, 2016 came along, and all of a sudden, like, you get stuff like Lil Peep, like putting like trap tunes in in punk rock anthems, like you know. And so, like, all of a sudden, like that whole world just kind of fell apart. <laughs> yeah, there, Which there's is good. There is no conformity in this day and age, you know, like we, we've basically witnessed like the, you know, artist, it doesn't matter what genre, what style, anything you need. We now have the tools, technology and outreach through the internet that you don't even need a band anymore, except, and you can just use those tools to like Mm -hmm. hire, hire gigging musicians to play with you, like backing musicians or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, like uh, the, the, the accessibility is now at a peak that it has never been before. Cause you know, I'm, th- I'm 30 looking back at it 15 years ago when I was, you know, in high school playing gigs and like hustling my ass off. <laughs> like it was like, dude, there was nothing like this. I mean, like my space had just died and like, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, we just like, that was it. And like, so it was like, if you know, you know, kind of thing, like we were still in that archaic, like, you just got to like, hopefully get booked. And like, you know, it's just what it was. And now it's like, dude, you can like see everywhere in the country and like figure out what's popping and who's doing what. Oh, the touch your fingertips. Yep. You know what I mean? That That's something that's, that's cool. I look at, um, you kind of get this more so with the uh, the engineers. I've talked to like a couple, and mostly oh, the old head engineers who are like, like, I mean, they can e- like EQ anything and make it sound god tier, you know. Um, like the kind of people that that just like by listening to it, they can you know tell you if your kick was recorded in like a medium sized room or a large sized room, like like Sonic right. Wizards, you know, with, like, Sonic golden, Wizards, golden <laughs> headphones, and. Uh, but like they, they'll kind of like look at like uh, for example, I don't know if you've seen Isotope's plugin Ozone. Oh yeah, uh, it does everything for you. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like this like crazy mastering suite. And you got all these buttons and dials and stuff. But then it's also got like mastering assistant, which is like this AI neural network thing yep. that will listen to your track and try to get you really close, right, for the mastering stage. And I see stuff like that, and that to me is like the perfect plugin. Because it gives you the best of both worlds. It's where, bro- Oh, yeah. It's well, so it, broken. <laughs> you, can, you can get, like, the, I have no real idea what I'm doing, so I'm just going to trust this thing to do the mastering for me. So you can do that if you need to. But then for the people like me who really like to, like, kind of get into the nitty-gritty, because, like, I'm a computer nerd. Like, I will sit here and, yeah. you know, people see, like, like, I'll see, like, stuff where it's like, oh, yeah, like, song name final final master but for real this time dot wave and i'm like bro i like I, what was it i think scarlet we had 26 versions of before me and t-rex were like like happy with it by the time we were done yeah. um you know so i i really like to like get into the nitty-gritty of like you know the mastery and everything and so with something like that the way that's designed is it 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 kind of brings out the um the nuances yeah, it, it, it at the end of the day, it helps musicians get their point across, right? Exactly. It, it, exactly. You know, it's like a lot of the time, like mastering is just a polishing step. Like it's definitely make or break and it's important, but there's very little that you can do at the mastering stage that has an effect on the message of the song. Like yeah. what the fuck you're actually trying to say with this yeah. piece of music. You know? Yeah, and, and there's very little that you can do at the mastering stage that really affects how good you can mix exactly yeah exactly you know like it's literally it's it's like the magic wand you sprinkle a little bit on and it brings you know it it takes the entire track as a whole and like you know balances the highs mids lows and then the total at the end like that's all it's for and it's to make sure that your listenability is going to be generally good on any speaker it's not it's not the cure-all like people have this big like romanticized misconception that like i've got to get my shit professionally mastered dude (laughs) spend spend 200 bucks and get the ozone suite and like 
you're good. You have I everything you need. Right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and you can get it even cheaper probably through Splice too. So like, yep. I mean, you know, it's it's the three things broke the world for for modern <laughs> music. Are you ready for this? Number one, SoundCloud. Number two, FL Studio slash Logic. Three, Ozone. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Like literally, if you yeah, have those plugins, are, I just I I I, I love them. Like I. If I ever get famous one day, I would love to do sponsored spots for them. I will sell my soul for that sponsored spot. I don't care, man. Like, <laughs> but That's yeah, I, I, it's funny you should mention. So this is kind of something that I, I, if I were to talk to like an up and coming musician, that was more not like less so in the hip hop scene. Cause this is like really, important yeah, yeah. Hip-hop scene, but um, more so in like the traditional, like, like playing a band or, or, yeah. um, like solo acoustic sort of scene is I see a lot of people that will, if you like go online and you're looking at tutorials and stuff, they will teach you how to do the social media aspect. Right. And I see it as something that is incredibly important, but I, I, it almost crossed my mind as like, is this a little overweighed for what it is? Yeah. Right. So like, um, for example, somebody like me, right. I need to be big in the local scene because I need to be able to drive to my shows. <laughs> if, yeah. Like if, if, if I like put a bunch of effort into social media and end up with a huge following in LA, that's great. But that's like 3000 miles away. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't help you that much. So you're, you're right. looking for the, your immediate, like your immediate, you know, within a, let's say three hour driving mm-hmm. Absolutely. radius that one, like they're going to see you and two, you're going to get paid because hauling stuff around is not cheap, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, and then the other thing too is, you know, with uh, the the stress that um, just as a whole, a lot of like mentors and just, I guess, uh, not necessarily the industry, but just like the underground scene has put on social media, everybody's doing social media. But oh, yeah. Not really too many people are doing the, you know, like go to an open mic. Right. Yeah, the, the word of mouth style. Right. The you know how it used to is, be. Is that as somebody who you know has has kind of, I guess, made it in the sense that like I can make a living doing this, like a full time career. Um, that's something that I wish I would have seen more about, like learning how to do this stuff online. It's like, how do you do the word of mouth stuff? How do you like go to an open mic and like sign up for all this stuff? Is is there's all this this material and effort that will teach you how to do the social media side of things, but then like you don't. It's like then your entire musical career is digital, and it just kind of feels it. It gives you the sense of like, oh yeah, there's a thousand people that follow me, but like I'm sitting in my bedroom alone, kind of sort of. Yeah. Um, or so. And, and and you know it's like there's the opposite side of the coin where the social media aspect is a good tool for someone like you because yeah. now you can not have to you can look at venues you can look at like their entire schedule you know like everyone's got a link tree in their bio so like if there's a venue in your area or one you're interested in playing close to you all you have to do is like get in touch with them on instagram and like if, if you have and let's say you have like a good like it's not about how many followers you have and what you're doing it's about okay so this venue follows me because they book me blah 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 then your perspective will say oh well he's got a good resume that i can look at right here on my phone let's book him you know see that's where it can come into play for you and that's where your focus should be not necessarily in fucking los angeles or germany you know like yeah yeah i think the the social media aspect is like trying to make sure like trying to get more eyes on your stuff all the time when I think people tend to forget you want to get the right eyes on your stuff. Like, I'll yes. be honest, like, like the kind of people that listen to like Jay and, and the rest of Schema Posse, probably not interested in my music. I, well, I mean, maybe who knows? You'd but be like, surprised. those are two very <laughs> different sounds, you know? Um, so if, if they are listening to my music, it's because of a different reason. So, yep. or same thing, like, I don't necessarily need people in LA with their eyes on my music. It's nice. If they want to listen, I'm not going to stop them by all means, pump those streaming numbers up. But (laughs) you know, I, I like back to that. I need to kind of focus, focus on 
I guess, yeah, that's what it comes down to is, is with the advent of the internet, I've seen just like a lot of like a lack of focus from a lot yeah. of like, uh, musicians. Yeah. You know? And like now it's like everyone, you know, and I, it, everyone's worried about the stream count and the followers and like, dude, it's like, that's cool. Like, I mean, you can make some coin on that, but like, dude, they keep nerfing it like all the time. Like, like it's not as broken as it used to be. Like, (laughs) and like, you know, now it's like, like I remember, and you'll say the same thing. I remember when you had to like go through a fucking million hoops to get your shit on Spotify and Apple Music because that was like oh yeah that was the dream because it was select like either you were invited you were on a major label and like you got your shit put on there or like you know like there was some like rhyme or reason you were there now it's like dude anybody can do it like you know and like that's just become the meta you know of like where we're at you know like because now like you've got distribution services that can make you visible you know oh absolutely so. I, I, the other thing too is like you know when you're looking at numbers um people don't think about they just see a number right so like let's say like i got only, i've only got two streams you know on a song that i just put out right yeah and, which isn't unreasonable i've been there and <laughs> i mean and, same i make ambient like down tempo yeah. music like nobody likes that shit <laughs> what, what's, like I, I kind of explained it to um, another artist I work with, Keanu Pearl, sweetest, sweetest person I've ever met. And um, it, what kind of stream do you envision that to be? And she was kind of confused, right? She's like, what a stream is a stream? What are you talking about? And I'm like, well, is this like a song that your song just happened to play next after they finished an album and they're too busy making their Dunkin' Donuts order to try to like change the tune? Or do you want the stream that's like, at a party and there's a whole bunch of people singing along because on spotify that's still one stream yeah you know like like there's like those 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 situations like i remember going like parties and like you know one dude would be like standing on the coffee table another dude's like on the couch and it's like like bohemian rhapsody and everybody's drunk you know yeah like that versus like a tune that just happened to play next while you're making your dunkin donuts order like it, it it's it's impossible to tell quality over just a number. A number exactly. is quantity, you know. Exactly. And, and I, I think that when people kind of get hung up on the the stream, I oh, gotta get those streaming numbers up. Like uh, to a degree, sure, but that's not the be all end all. I would and rather have. Actually, um, it comes down to this idea that I can't remember who who came up with it or where I heard it first. It's this idea of a thousand true fans, right? Yep. So if you've got, let's say you need to make a full time career, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, could you live off of 60 K a year? Oh, fuck. Yeah. I can live off of 30. I'm doing it right yeah, now. Okay. Like, uh, okay. you know, so like 60, if I, if, this is if what I 60K, could, oh, go ahead. Like if I could make the same money I make in my day job right now doing this full time, I would not even be mad. Like, okay. you know, like I would be grateful. Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah. So, so this idea of a thousand true fans comes down to not just like vision and it sounds sounds stupid it's one of those things where like people tell you like this is what this looks like and you go okay yeah and then once you kind of figure it out yourself you're like oh that's what they meant by this right but um it's this idea of like visualizing what does making it look like for you right yeah for me it means being able to pay my rent to buy food get my phone bill taken care of and maybe go out to dinner every now and then you know and travel and play music Right, yeah, and, 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 like, if I could play music, then, like, let's do that. So this idea of a thousand true fans is, like, can you get, you know, Kanye West numbers? That's a stretch. You know, if we're being realistic, that that's a bit of a stretch. Right? And I wouldn't want that because that's oh, way right. more pressure than I would ever want. Exactly, but could you get a thousand people to, whether it's buying merch, whether it's through, like, some kind of, like, Patreon thing or whatever – a thousand people at five bucks a month exactly yeah you knew where i was going with that i've already been on this wave (laughs) Uh, yeah yeah okay okay so i i I, uh i actually explained that too this was actually i was talking to um to t-rex about this and he was he was feeling kind of down i forget when this was this was like a couple years ago he was feeling kind of down about it because it was like a little bit of a lull this was actually right before uh he got asked to join schema which of all times right and he was still kind of feeling like a little bit down about it. I'm like, listen, I'm like, you don't, you don't need to like get huge, true, like massive numbers. I'm like, you just got to find, 
right? The way I, I sold it to him was, you got to trick a thousand people into giving you five bucks. <laughs> I mean, uh, and, and even if you even if you tricked a thousand people into giving you two dollars, yeah, even two like, bucks, you know, that's yeah. two, two grand a month, which is like, I don't know what the cost of living is where you are. That would probably like be like the like that would be like that, that's twenty five grand a year. But... That's that's twenty five grand a year. Yeah, roughly. Yep. You know. So. so, yeah, I mean, it, you know, I, I, I challenge people when, when they're talking about, like, oh, like, you know, I just feel like I'm not getting anywhere. I'm like, give yourself this goal first. Get here. Because if you can get here, then you can, now you've got, you know, now you're, you're, you can uh, justify doing this 40 hours a week. And if you're doing this 40 hours a week, like, you know how quickly things can snowball from there? Oh, like, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. That's like me. I drop an episode a day. In, in, yeah. the light, in the light of consistently consistency, somebody will listen to this episode, right? And then they'll go back and listen to every other one. You know what I mean? And then that's that's how I, I acquire my 1,000. You oh, know, is by, it's just by consistently putting it out, not giving a shit, like, who likes it, who doesn't? Like, because one, I'm a journalist. Two, like, you know, I don't consider myself some no-jumper, like, grand poovah, you know, <laughs> like. And I wouldn't, and like I said, I wouldn't want that, man. Like, I don't need that much attention. Like, it's, I'm a more of like, if you know, you know, kind of guy, you know, like. <laughs> I can guarantee to, you when uh, Joe Rogan put his first episode up, nobody watched. Or I, I'm sure like people who really love Joe Rogan, like the initial startup fans, you know, that like liked oh, him yeah, yeah, yeah. from the UFC and Fear Factor oh, and all yeah, the other right. TV oh, yeah, that's right. I, I yeah. forgot he had like a background from other stuff. That was yeah. Guy. But, you know but I mean. <laughs> it, it definitely didn't start out as big as it is now, though. You know Absolutely. what I mean? And, you know, and, and to tie into your point of social media that we made earlier, how that fits into this equation, it distorts your reality. Yes. It, it distorts your your sense of um, urgency and pride in what you're doing. Like mm -hmm. you like people who are so focused on chasing that that fucking, you know, I need a hundred K like a hundred K monthly listeners. I need this and that. Like the more you chase it, the farther away it gets from you. You want to know why? Because one, you stop caring about the quality of your music anymore. You think you're caring about the quality, but instead you're trying to package something to sell that everyone else is already packaging to sell alongside you and the millions of yeah. other people that are doing this exact same thing. The algorithms are messed up. So like you have to like, you know, it's like starting your own business, right? You have to go word of mouth, hand to hand transactions, you know, like that's how you build your following. You don't build your following off of, I just paid Instagram 300 bucks to run ads on my shit. And like, you know, like, I paid for this playlist, like curation, like, you know, all this. No, like if you want the resid, like, sure, that's good for a, an, an instant fix, a very temporary one. But if you want the residuals, you really have to go out there and you have to like network the old school way. Like you can still use social media to do that. But in the end, you still have to make it a personal experience. You know, if you want somebody to give you that five bucks, like you got to give them five dollars worth of your time and quality of your music. Absolutely. You know, yeah, it, it's it's almost like um, I try to tell us like I try to tell people this right as somebody who's a huge computer nerd, as somebody who's into like how algorithms work, just for shits and giggles, because like I'm weird like that. Um, those numbers and all of that are a symptom. And the people who put the algorithms together are assuming that like, or that they're working with this sort of idea that that is a symptom of you being as, you know, well-known or whatever as you are. Right. Like the people that like, like they buy numbers for like SoundCloud. Right. Like yeah, that's a, yeah. Number one, that can actually, the algorithms are so sophisticated now that can actually mess up any chance you would have of actually popping off on an algorithm number one yep. number two is those numbers are are, are just a, a symptom of how far you've gotten along or how many people are actually listening it's not it's, it's not just really raw around, data you know? it's just yeah, raw it's, data it's just data it's just a pointer to to give you an indicator that that's it you know um and i i, I especially with like the the god I'm, this is the first like inkling of getting old it's like especially like the the younger the you know like the the kids that are just now coming out of high school or like, like i'm <laughs> 24 and i see this now and i'm like oh god now i sound like my dad but you know like 
just like them where like they're obsessed with numbers. It's all numbers. And I'm like, I want to get my numbers up. You know, I got to get more followers. I got to get more of this. And I'm like, listen, like be happy with, I've, I've got 300 people. Well, probably like 350 now or whatever that follow me on Instagram. But I do know that the people that do follow me, like regularly attend the, the gigs that I post. And they, regularly oh, interact with your stuff. Exactly. You know, and, and, or they'll, they'll, even if they're not interacting with me on Instagram, I've had like multiple shows where I show up and people are like, yeah, we saw you were going to be playing here on Instagram. Like I just posted it in a story or whatever. And they're like, yeah, we want to come by. And like, they, they throw like, you know, five bucks in the tip jar. Like that's, that, that post has already made me more money than, you know. <laughs> and, and there's your five bucks. <laughs> exactly. You know, then I can turn around and give it to the Zach. So like. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. You know, like. You know, and I, it, you know, I feel like you're very surprised at this moment because you've seen what I've been doing. Like, oh, yeah, absolutely. You know my, my normal That's scope, great. my normal scope of people I talk to. I don't usually get down like this with somebody who's yeah. not in that scope, which is really refreshing, you know? Yeah. And like, I, I recently, I, I published an episode with the one and only Slug Christ, you know, and, um, mm-hmm. He uh, he made a good point in that, he, you know, because he talked about how he was living in Atlanta. He's from Atlanta, West Atlanta, and he it was starting to pop off in the SoundCloud wave. And, you know, he had like 40, 50K followers and like all this crazy oh, stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. People, people from the outside of music translate that into money. So, oh, he's got 40K <laughs> followers. He must be rich. Nah, dude, we're just no. barely making it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and like, I mean, like, and to me, that's like, that's even more attention than I would want. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, I don't, I'm not out here doing what I do for the fan service. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need like people to tell me this is great. Like what I'm doing is I'm giving you a tool to show your people an inside glimpse of, you know, your perspective and like what you're doing. Like that's. I, I believe in very much in like neutrality, like, mm-hmm. cause like, you know, like I try to take all the negatives out of any equation and also the positives. I just try to leave things for what they are, you know, like leave a footprint because well, guess what, you know, in a few months you'll tap back in with me and it'll be a whole different story and a continuation oh, yeah. story. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, like it, it, it is crazy. Just kind of like trying to, cause like as, you know, as a, a business owner, or professional or whatever, or whatever I am, I like to say professional cause it makes me sound like I know what I'm doing. An entrepreneur. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 you know, you have to kind of like build out this calendar. Like I can tell you right now, like the rest of my August uh, is completely book solid with shows, which is great. But like come like September or October, like I might be doing some completely different. Yeah. You know, I might be, I might be actually tracking that, that punk album. I might be putting together some, like, uh, there was a track I actually did, uh, for, uh, Keanu Pearl, actually, <clears throat> of all people. Um, it almost crashed my computer because it was a medley of like four or five tunes that she had written. And by the time we were done, not including the bosses, just like the actual audio tracks, um, well, audio tracks and then MIDI instruments. It came out to like 160 some odd tracks. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, yeah. Been and, there. <laughs> uh, and 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 then by the time the buses and, and you account like for like the the buses and all the sends and the effects channels and everything, it was like 200 plus. And I remember that I went to go bounce that thing down, and there was like one section where the audio would skip, and I had no idea how to fix it because the computer was just like. Fuck you. It was like, peaking, you know, oh, CPU yeah. peak was just r- through the roof. It was, it was just like done. It was, just, it was so done. Um, yeah. But I don't know where that came from. That actually doesn't have anything to do with what I wanted to talk about. But, you know, this, this idea of like trying to like plan out what's going on in the future is, is um, that's currently where a lot of like my, my mental power has been. It's just been yeah. like, the know? residual. Yeah. It just like trying to like find those, those little, uh, honestly, and I wish I would have uh, learned this like back in high school when I really started like tracking music. But when it comes to like social media or or just music in general, like the more you can do with people, the better you are. Generally, the better off you're going to be. Yeah. You know, um, it, I didn't really that wasn't a concept I really got until I saw an article talking about the 87 musicians that worked on Kendrick Lamar's "To Pimp a Butterfly." Which is crazy to me. Or right? like the Gorillas, Demon oh, Days yeah. album. 
Yeah. You know, you, mm-hmm. you look at some of, like, the credits for, like, some of these, like, like some of the best albums that are, like, my favorite albums, you know? And, and it's just, like, there's, like, there'll be, like, 20, 30 people involved with this. Yeah, you yeah. know? And, and I'm, like, I'm, like, okay, if this guy who made this incredibly awesome thing, like, it, it's very it's very easy to get the perception that like, you know, if you're listening to like a John Mayer record, then it's like, Oh, like this is John Mayer. You know, this is oh, like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 no. John That's Mayer was the, the spark. On the cover. Yeah. Yes. He was the spark. He had mm-hmm. an entire fucking team behind him. Just like Dave oh, Matthews. Absolutely. Yep. Just like, just like, like Dave Matthews would not be shit without his band and like mm-hmm. without his production crew. Like, dude, like there's so much that goes into it, you know? <laughs> Well, that's, that's actually what uh, the idea behind Gramophone was. So Gramophone is um, the sort of like producer moniker that I went by for a little while. It was mostly like a side project that mm-hmm. I went under, which tried to combine elements of like the, the colors and like the instrumentation of like almost like a, a like a dive bar jazz band yeah. with the percussive elements of like um, Atlanta Trap. Of yeah, hip hop. And and the uh, the chord progressions of pop, <laughs> right? Yeah. And that was just like right around when when that that project started, like 2016, was what I was I was just like really into that, right? At yeah. the time. Um, and so it has kind of like this like unique, unique blend of like textures and stuff. But at the heart of it, it was all about collaboration, right? Yeah. There is uh, no, there is one gramophone track that I actually put vocals on everything else is is features and you know other people coming onto the tracks and yeah placements you know yeah and and i'm and that was really kind of what i was trying to do with that was just like try to collaborate with people try to sit down and be like what are other people's songwriting process I, before that you know before like when i would be um honestly working with t-rex was a, a big eye opener because before then a lot of what i would do would like sit down and make the beat with people yeah. and like it, it totally blew my mind of like on the back end side of how hip hop works is like a lot of the time the producer just makes the beat and then sends it to someone and then they write to it and yeah. then they'll come back and do a little bit of like shuffling around to make sure the vocals fit and that uh, kind that, of that that's the difference between a beat producer and an actual producer though oh yeah 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 that I, I'd say yeah that that's like uh you know if if you're just like slapping the beat together and then send it off to somebody that makes you more like a beat maker yeah. But yeah. when you're in in house like custom tailoring to someone, mm-hmm. that's the real level of production. Yeah. You know, like you're really producing for an artist at that point, because what you're making is custom made for them. You know, mm-hmm. for their sound. You know. But yeah, I, I so I that was ultimately what I really wanted out of Gramophone, and to an extent, this this next project that I'm still writing out <clears throat> is kind of like that it's got those elements of like collaboration and stuff i definitely have a story that i want to tell um and it's like it's something that i'm really excited about i want it to sound a little bit more like um a little bit more like a um almost like that john mayer-esque continuum sound that i just really love um it's one of my favorite it, albums so like oh yeah <laughs> and, and, but at the same time i want it to be like my variation of that you know whereas yeah. this is an album that obviously i want to take some pointers from but i want it to i want it to sound like you almost like a modern equivalent of that you know when it comes to the lyrics i want to talk about things like you know like uh, what dating looks like for you know a early to mid 20 something in like the 2019s 2020s and the roaring 20s <laughs> oh yeah you know, roar 20s. oh boy no the uh, r-a-w-r-x-d 20s rawr ring 20s yeah I, I know, yeah that just that that's giving me like flashbacks for like 2011 <sighs> that whole social media scene it's so um, dirty <laughs> like... dude there's um <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. A, uh, if you if you haven't heard, the, oh man, what's the name of that? I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up because there's a there's an album that popped up on Spotify one day and it's uh let me see here if I can Canadian. For anybody listening on audio right now, I'm like going through um Spotify here. Okay, so there's this uh, there's this uh this band called Canadian Softball, right? Um. They've got like a Midwestern sort of like punk sound. 
so modern baseball. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but the Canadian version. <laughs> And uh, they've got they've got this album called Awkward and Depressed, right? Um, it's from 2017, and the 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 uh, second to last song is called um, Ohio is for Emo Kids. So it's a medley of of all these different. It's an homage to Hawthorne Heights and like oh, yeah, dude, Sunday and like the classics, you know. So on this album, maybe it's the one after that, Pink Wednesday. <laughs> There's there's a track where it, it's it's like basically this guy writing from the perspective of like someone who was friends with like one of those kids from back in like you know, the, yeah. yeah but but it, it, it's funny because like he's like um there's there's these these lines that are they're so funny but they're so true like there's one line in there where he's like talking about like you know um yeah you still owe me for that warp tour ticket that i bought you in 2011 you know like the 50 bucks <laughs> for that or whatever or like all these different things or like there was you know it, it, it's one dude talking about this person that he has seen sort of continue to just conform with the times throughout life and it's very interesting to see a what sounds like a very 2011 song yeah be you know, I don't know how to describe it. It's just incredibly relatable for lack of yeah. Or, and that's but that's the core essence like with yeah. with music you want it to be relatable because if it's not relatable your audience isn't they're gonna be like that's cool but like that's it there's no retention you know like there's there's one tune that i'm trying to write where basically the idea is like um you know like like you end up with like these people that like maybe you're not necessarily like dating 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 but like definitely <laughs> like, it, right but that's about it you know <laughs> well, like it's, it's like that phase between like the uh, like just swipe right and like i'll see you maybe twice and that's it and uh, like like the actual dating it's that weird spot in between you know <laughs> that's and amazing <laughs> it's this song where it's like okay like that doesn't really happen or maybe it doesn't but basically like the the line that i'm trying to work with is this idea of like i don't want to end up as just another picture at the bottom of your phone you know of like this this idea of just you know what i'm saying because people have been in that scenario right. like it's a yeah. thing where you're like damn all right swipe right start talking to somebody and they're like all right you're cool and they ghost like yep or just like like yeah like we hung out twice like you know you do like the whole like like jokey like thing like let's take photos together like okay like whatever but then like you never hear from them again you know and the, yeah dude i'm telling you you're... so that, that's like another one or like um that's normally how my songwriting process goes is i'll come up with a line and i'm like oh i'm gonna write a song about that like i got this other tune that uh is in reference to this person i was really good friends with um and we were both really into kind of like that that hardcore like scene, right? <laughs> Not necessarily hardcore, but like think more like the like Never Shout Never um, sort mm. of era. The scene. The scene kind of sort of thing. Um, never Shout Never God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, what was it them that... Um, was it them that just put out a good album? All time low. That's who it was that put out this. Came out of the fucking woodwork and like everyone was like, "Dude, have you heard the new All Time Low album?" And I'm like, "What fucking year is this?" <laughs> this is a 2012. Like, <laughs> did I listen to it? And I was like, "Okay, this is actually really good." Holy shit. <laughs> um, but it, you know, this. So the the song that I'm working on, the the uh, the whole idea from it was like this this one of those one of those friendships that you just kind of drift apart, right? Yeah. And the line that I came up with kind of like as like the, the main line was hello stranger goodbye friend, right? And you yeah. kind of like build off of that into like this um this sort of like I want to talk to you but I don't want to talk to like the modern day you. I want to talk to you from like, you know, 2014, 2015. But that yeah. person's gone and all I'm left with is like this person that's kind of the same person but like really not. It's it's like it's a song about capped out friendships. Yeah, exactly. You know, so and then like, but not realizing that that that's really gone until like you actually like hit them up, you know, and then like years later on social media and like you realize like the conversation's not really there. Yeah, and like you know? they're still they're still doing the same shit, you know, like. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, that that's another one that I'm like trying to work on. It just sucks because like my show schedule is 
fucking crazy right now. <laughs> so like yeah. I, I like get home from playing the show and I'm like, oh man, I still gotta feed the cat and do the dishes and I really want to work on this music, but I'm so tired. <laughs> 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 that's the it only gets worse as you get older my friend oh uh, you know? yeah well that, that's why um you know I, I every now and then i think back to when i was working in i used to work uh telecommunications i used to be a tower climber um and Brave after, soul. <laughs> it, honestly you know now that i once you learn all the safety regulations and stuff um i would rather do tower climbing i would rather work at 200 feet strapped to a cell tower than work at 50 feet strapped to a tree yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, and that, that's just me. But then, like, there's other crazy stuff. Like, like I would rather work at 200 feet strapped to a cell tower than 50 feet in a bucket truck. Because yeah. that shit bounces around, and I'm not, oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. Um, and to this day, ladders are still the sketchiest fucking things I've ever heard of. And no, I'm sorry. Anything that's more than 20 feet off the ground on a ladder, I'm not doing. Or I'll just yeah. see people, like, on top of a ladder. Like, they'll just walk the ladder while they're doing dude, stuff. Yeah. Like, dude, like, no, dude, no, 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 no. Like, dude, I'm guilty of doing that. When I was an electrician's apprentice years and years yep. and years ago, my boss was like, don't you get off that goddamn ladder. Like, he was like, walk <laughs> that fucking ladder. He was like, save yourself the time. Like, walk it. And he was like, if you fall, you fall. Like, I'm like, oh, my God. He was like, yeah. just think of, he's like, just think about it. You're learning while you're 12 feet off the ground. You know, like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not walking a 20 foot or 30 foot ladder. Like you're crazy. Like, <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, like, so, like, people kind of get the misconception, like, oh, tower climbers make a shit ton of money. Like, I will tell you right now, tower climbers don't make a shit ton of money. They just work a shit ton of hours. They um, get the overtime. <laughs> oh yeah, well, like, it, like the common. There we go. Oh no. Oh no! Possible. There we go. Tower climbers make a shit ton of money. Yes. Don't. Um, they were kind of hours. And, um, see, now it's gone. I just started the whole story over now. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so the, the, the point that I was trying to make, though, is like, you know, when you're working those hours, you, you, you realize how far you can actually push yourself, right? And you can actually say, holy shit, like, I can't believe I actually did that. Yeah. Um, like, my, I once worked 74 hours in five days. That's inhuman, and I've done it too, yeah. and it sucks. Yep. Yep. It and, um, sucks. <laughs> and there, was, uh, there was one date where what I was doing was, uh, you know, like in the, the Verizon commercials where, like, the guy would be like, oh, can you hear me now? Good. Yeah. And then take a step. That was literally my job, right? And it wasn't exactly that. It was like I'd pull up to like I was doing working on them. They were called, we called them integrations, right? Mm -hmm. And I was doing it for Sprint, so I'd pull up to the site, right? I'd run a a hundred foot Ethernet cable out from my car up to the cabinet, plug plug into the cabinet, sit in my car, type away, and do a bunch of like you know like computer stuff, right? Hit enter. The cabinet would do a bunch of the, you know run a bunch of scripts or whatever, and then um, I'd have to call myself thirty six times, right? And uh, this would go on, and depending on how many different technologies were on the tower, without getting too into the weeds, this could take anywhere from two hours to 12 hours. Right? Yeah. So uh, it was around, I, I had started my day at 7 o'clock. It was around like 6 o'clock at night, right? And um, the company that I was subcontracted to asked me if I wanted to bust out one more site before I went home, right? Now, I was getting paid at the time, it was like, 20 bucks an hour, right, to run around, gallivant around New England doing this, <laughs> I was probably going to be into overtime by the time this week was over, almost definitely going to be into overtime, and um, and I was also getting paid, you know, 52 cents a mile to use my own vehicle, right, Yeah. which, like, at the time, I had a piece of shit, like, 2008 Kia Sportage with, like, 200k miles on it, so, like, let's go. Yeah, right? run it. <laughs> um, so I was like, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'll bust out another one, right? And the guy I was subcontracted out to, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, all right, you know, here's the address, I'll send you the stuff, swing by this guy, go pick up this phone, and then, you know, this test phone, and then just run there and take care of this. I was like, yeah, whatever, right? On my way there, um, my boss from my company, he's like, hey, can you make sure you get your um, your paperwork done tonight? You know, right there, at least, like, try to get it done before you finish up. That way we can send the invoicing out to this company I'm subcontracted to tomorrow. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, no big deal, right? 
that was around like six o'clock at night, right? Um, so I go to the site, I get there, right? Turns out it's in a church. So I don't have access to the site, right? Not that big of a deal because you can ask the remote team in India to like turn off different things, off and on different things. But the problem is that when they're the ones turning off and on different technologies, it takes like 15 to 20 minutes to do that. Whereas because it goes I'm across the world, yeah. Exactly. Well, also because they're in the middle of something, and so they got to stop what they're doing, log into the system, and do all this other stuff to help me. Whereas, like, if I had physical access to the site, it's literally just like, yeah, cool. And, like, Thirty it's seconds. You're good. You yeah. Know, like. Um. So. I also didn't realize how many technologies needed to be tested. I thought this was just going to be a one, get it in there a couple hours and get it done. And then I get there and they're like, oh, no, this is a full build out site. This is like seven technologies. You're going to be here for like 12 hours. Right. So I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, I'm like, OK. I'm like, wait, I picked up a second test phone. I'm like, I could run two test phones at once. Right. So I was like trying to do all this, uh, this, this juggling long story short, that didn't end up working. I don't know why I continued to sit there. I could have just left at any time and no one would have cared. Like they would have been like, yeah, you've been in the field, like 14, 15, 16 hours, go home. Um, I do remember right around three o'clock, a, uh, it started snowing three 30, a police officer pulled up and was wondering why I was sitting in a church parking lot at three o'clock in the morning to which I responded. Yeah, there's a sprint site up there. I'm just trying to bring it online. He goes, okay, I'll let the guys at the department know, but just, you know, just be careful. Stop to say hi. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure you're still warm, blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> right around, I think it was five o'clock in the morning, I saw a, uh, I, I, I basically got to all but one technology, and the last technology was broken, and I needed physical access to be able to fix it. And I told the guy, I'm like, well, I've been here for like 10 hours. And I've been in the field for like 22, so I'm going home. And he goes, oh, he's like, you've been in the field 22 hours? He's like, go home, man. Go home. <laughs> like, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm driving back over. I'm going 93 north. Um, and I get a phone call from, or I get a text from my boss at the company company, right? Mm -hmm. Like my company. And he's, I get a text that says, hey, just noticed you didn't get your paperwork done last night. Just, uh, you know, whenever you get up in the morning, <laughs> make sure that, you know, that, that you try to get this done. I know you're going to be tired, but, like, we really want to try to get that out because such and such, which is, like, his boss, really wants to get this invoice out, right? <laughs> so I called him, right? <laughs> and, uh, and his name's Brendan. He's the coolest dude. I'm still friends with him to this day. And... Uh, and I, just, I called this guy, right? And he was like, oh, you're up early. I'm like, I never went to bed. You're getting your paperwork tomorrow. <laughs> you tell such and such. He's going to wait. Goodbye. Click. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And by the time I was done, that was a 23 and a half hour day. I could have done the paperwork to get the extra half hour into that one shift. But I'm like, no, I'm too, I'm too tired. I am exhausted. And I didn't wake up till like 4 p.m. <laughs> And this is why we want to just focus on making music because that shit sucks. <laughs> okay. Well, that, then now, like, I'll like end up in these situations, you know, especially like uh, with with T Rex because I, I love working with him. He's definitely like one of my favorite artists to work with. Where like we'll both be sitting in a car and we'll be like, or you know, doing like the car test. You know how the car test goes. Oh yeah, I know and, what like, the car we'll, test like, is. <laughs> we'll, we'll like spend like ten hours like tracking a thing, you know, getting the vocal takes just right, getting everything just right listen to it in the car i'm like wow this fucking sucks uh <laughs> okay and then we'll spend another like three hours we'll get it really really close and then we'll be sitting in the car and like we've got that one tiny little thing right that like i could fix this yep. i could fix this with like one or two more versions but i'm really tired <laughs> and i just want this to be done but then i think back to that 23 and a half hour show or day and i'm like are we at 23 and a half hours? No. We're at like 14. <laughs> we're only halfway there. All right. And then we'll go back in and we'll fix it. And it's it's definitely one of those things that gives me gives me a little bit of like, you know, motivation to keep going. Like I've done far worse. I can do this. Yeah. You know? Food for thought for the people. Absolutely. You know? And with all that being said, man, it has been an absolute pleasure. I appreciate you yeah. taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, come talk to me. I know you've got shows uh, 
coming up very soon today. Mm-hmm. And um, what are the handles for people that may be interested in what you're doing to keep up with you? Yeah, so uh, my primary handle, probably if you want to get a hold of me for projects or anything like that, you can check me out on Instagram at Jake B-N-H. Um, I used to have my full name there, but nobody knows how to spell Bartolin. And then I did Jake B Gramophone and happened to explain what Gramophone was to people when I played live shows. It was a little bit awkward. So Jake B N H is what we got now. Um, Jake B N H. Yep. Uh, I'm not on Twitter because I try to cut down on social media use, not on Snapchat. Oh. You can find Twitter, my Facebook. Twitter's a cancer, dude. Oh, like. dude. <laughs> you, can, you can find my Facebook, but um, only, I don't Only really, if you look. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got, like, there's a Facebook page. It exists. But, like, the actual account I used to manage it is an empty account with no friends, and I rarely do anything with that page. Um, yeah. The best place to check me out is my website jakebartolan.com which you can find a link to on the instagram so that's got like if you want to book me that's got like other projects i'm working on so awesome awesome all that will be included in the uh, bio of this episode so people can just click and go if they want to but yeah i appreciate you should go they should go check out the infinite conversations merch oh yeah go get you some (laughs) link in the bio big dogs you know (laughs) But yeah, man, I appreciate you. This has been awesome. I will definitely be seeing you again very soon. You know. Yeah, this has been fun. Hell yeah, man.